name says Predator9021, but I prefer Crichton. Uh, today I'm going to make my first tutorial ever. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people on the net that have been having trouble getting good quality videos uploaded to YouTube that have excellent audio to go with them. Um, just my two cents worth, you know, I, I think it has to do with control of input volume on the videos, and this tutorial is going to show, uh, you know, what you need to do to get your volume down and how to select the right uh, recording sources and so on and so forth to make sure that you're all set and ready to go before you begin your video recording. Now, first of all, when you want to record good audio with good video, you want to use a program like Cam Studio or one of the other major ones on the net that is really popular or, you know, is, is very well known. Um, just one that, in general, is, you know, good quality. Um, second thing is you want to make sure that you have the, you know, your manufacturer-specific OEM drivers for your sound card. That alone, right there, can uh, increase quality of audio or affect it very heavily. Um, I have an NVIDIA sound card in mind, which is just a generic AC97 sound card with the NVIDIA control applets. Uh, so, anyway, um, let's get moving on here. Alright, <coughs> excuse me. In the volume control, um, you know, this is what most people see right here. Now, this is the Windows standard volume control, usually found under Start, Programs, Accessories, uh, Multimedia, Volume Control, and this is what you normally get. Now, when you open this up, you need to go to Options and Properties, and then you can select the Recording Control here, and what the Recording Control does is it allows you to select which input you want to record your audio from, essentially. Okay, so right now I'm set for SPDIF, which is part partly where the microphone is. Now, if I set it for stereo mix, this is where it's going to record everything that comes from the computer speakers. MP3s, waves, movies, it'll record all that audio in any program that you use to record audio with. Alright, so the next thing is this is the record input level. All right, on the record input level, if I go all the way up, it's really loud. And in most cases, when you turn it all the way up like that, if you're trying to record audio from, say, FL Studio, Sony Acid Pro, or whatever software it is that you're recording music from that you've written or whatever, it will cause bass notes to overdrive. It'll cause high notes to hiss and crack. So that that right there is the most important thing is keeping your volume down you know as you can see I got it pretty down pretty low right now and you can still hear me quite well and once you've got that set you know you can fire up whatever program you use oh hang on I got two copies of it open here close this one and pull this one back up and once you're done you can you know pull up whatever it is that you're working on and and take off with the recording. Studio, like I said earlier, 
the second thing is you want to make sure, okay, because when, I don't know about you people, but when I'm done with Cam Studio, it usually leaves this humongous file on my desk, on my hard drive, that's recorded at 200 frames a second input rate, and if I just try to upload that straight to YouTube, it's going to cause a problem. And I also know that a lot of people like to, you know, cut and splice certain pieces of their videos before uh, uploading it. Now, whenever you go straight from Cam Studio or whatever video recording software that you're using to record your desktop, whenever you go straight from this to another piece of software like Virtual Dub, which by the way is 100% free, um, Virtual Dub is a program that allows you to reprocess video before you send it off on its merry little way to YouTube, Google Video, or wherever you want to do with it. Um, the first thing you want to do, you know, you want to open open your video file. Once you've got your video file open, then you want to go into your audio for whatever program that you have it set to, and you want to make sure that you have your audio in, uh, input and output matched. You want to keep the you know frequencies the same on them. If it's 44.1, then you want to keep them at 44.1 hertz to make sure that there's no loss in quality of audio. Also, if um, you want to match the output stream rate uh, from one from the source to the destination file. So if your input source is 196 k bits per second, you want your output to be 196 k bits per second. If you if there's any way that you cause any sort of down mixing within your second audio video processing application then you will lose quality in the video and the last thing that I can that I can recommend is that if for some reason your computer when you're processing the video if it's just causing a lot of grittiness and grinding in the audio itself then nine times out of ten what you can do is you can record your music to an mp3 file export it render it whatever it takes to an mp3 file and then programs just like virtual dub will allow you to replace the pre-existing audio stream with that of the mp3 uh, or wave file or whatever you know most standard supported formats, WMA, MP3s, uh, so on and so forth. But that's it for now. Thank you for looking at my tutorial, and uh, I hope somebody somewhere out there is able to gain something off of this. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to write me an email, and I will do the best I can to answer them. And oh, yeah, feel free to check out my videos as well. Thank you.